Hey, so today we're going to scrape this web page using Node.js. We're going to be using the Puppeteer library for this, which if you don't know, is a headless browser. If you don't know what a headless browser is, it's basically a browser without a user interface. So for this video, we're going to be using Puppeteer to visit this web page, which has a bunch of quotes and their authors, as well as some tags. We're then going to go ahead and scrape all of this data. If you're a beginner, I highly recommend this website, which you can use to practice scraping. And if this seems very simple to you, they also have a bookstore version with a lot more data. So I already have a basic project set up with an index.js as the main entry point. So what we want to do is install Puppeteer. So in your terminal, go ahead and type npm install Puppeteer. Once it is installed, go ahead and close your terminal and in our index.js, let's start by importing Puppeteer. Now, right after you import Puppeteer, we need to create an iffy. An iffy is an immediately invoked function expression. And the reason why we need this is because we're going to be using a wait. And for that to work, we need to have an asynchronous function, which is going to be this iffy right here. So any code inside this iffy can use a wait and will not have any problems. So what we can do is we can go ahead and launch Puppeteer as a browser. So we can create a variable called browser and we're going to set this to await puppeteer.launch. Now, if I run the code, nothing's really going to happen. And the reason for that is because this browser is headless. So let's go ahead and set headless to false inside our launch method. And now if we save our file and try to run node index.js, you're going to notice we get a Chromium browser opened up but it doesn't actually go anywhere. And the reason for that is because we're not telling it to go to a page or to close right after it's open. Now, before I set headless to false, I wanna show you how to navigate to a page. So what we can do is we can create a variable called page and we can set this to await browser.newPage. Now we can tell this page to go to a specific URL. The way we can do that is we can say page.go to, and then we can pass in the URL over here. So the web page that we want to go to is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this inside over here as a string. And we also want to add a wait in front of it. So let's go ahead and restart our Node.js application. And now, as you can see, it actually opens up a new page, which takes us to the quotes website. Now the browser isn't actually closing after it's done. So we have to manually close it every single time. To fix that, what we can do is after the page has visited this link, we can close the browser by saying await browser.close. If we now save and restart, you're going to notice it actually goes to the page first and then it quickly closes the browser. That's exactly what we want. So let's move on with the rest of the code. Now, before we start scraping any data, I also want to show you how to take a screenshot of the current page that you're on. So the way you can do that is you can use await page.screenshot and we can pass in an object with the path set to the name of the file that you want. So in this case, we can just set it to quotes.png. Let's save this and let's try to run our application. So it quickly closed right after, but if we head back to VS code and open up our file tree, you're going to notice we have a new image file called quotes.png. So if I click on it, you're going to notice it's basically a screenshot of the web page. So let's now move on to the next thing. What I want to do is I want to remove this object right here because I don't want the browser window to keep opening up on every restart. I'm also going to go ahead and remove the screenshot because I don't really need that anymore. Now, let's say we want access to this web pages HTML as a string. It's really easy to get that. So what we can do is we can go ahead and console log this and say await page dot content and content is a method. So make sure to call it and let's save this file and we'll start our Node.js application. Now you're going to notice we have the entire HTML as a string. So this is really cool. Now what we can do with this HTML is we can use the document object in order to query certain things. So in this case, we want quotes and their authors and a bunch of tags. So let's go ahead and deal with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the console log statement. Let's define a variable called quotes, which is going to be an array of all the different quotes. And we can set this to await page dot evaluate. And inside this function, we can actually use the document object in order to evaluate this page. If you've used the document object before in order to retrieve information from an HTML web page, you know that it's pretty easy to work with. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to define a variable called quote elements. 
And we're going to set this to document.query selector all. And in here, we need the name of the class of every single quote. So let's head back to our browser and open our developer tools. Or you can right click and click on inspect. Now go to the elements tab and you can use the selector to select the quotes element. So what we're finding here is a parent element, which includes the quote, the author, as well as all the tags. So in this case, let's go ahead and hover outside of that. And as you can see, this is an entire div with every single element inside of it. And this div has a class of quote. So we can use this class name in order to retrieve every single element from within. So let's go ahead and use this class name in our code. So inside query selector all, we can use this by saying dot quote. And of course, if you had an ID, you'd use the hash symbol, but I'm using the class name, so it's going to be dot. Now, of course, this quotes element doesn't actually have the data sorted in the way that we want it to be. So we have to go ahead and retrieve every single thing. So back in our browser, what we can do is we can expand this div. And inside this div, we have a span with the class name of text. And if we expand this, you're going to see that this is the actual code itself. So we can use the text class from within the quotes elements in order to get the quote itself. So this is going to be really simple. First of all, let's go ahead and loop through all these quote elements. So I'm going to say for const quote element of quote elements, and let's go ahead and define the quote text. This is going to be the string within the span with the class name of text. So in order to get this, we can use the quote element. So quote element dot query selector. And this time we're not using query selector all because we only want a single element from within this quote element. So if you remember, the class name was text. Now this is an HTML element. It's not the string itself. So in order to get the string, we need to add dot inner text. And what I'm going to do outside of this loop is I'm going to create a variable called quotes array and set it to an empty array. Then inside of this loop, I'm going to push this text into this quotes array. So I'm going to say quotes array dot push and I'm going to pass in the quote text. Finally, we can go ahead and return this quotes array and right outside of this function, we can go ahead and console log quotes and see what we get. So I can say console log quotes, save the file and start our Node.js application. You're now going to notice that we have an array of strings with all the quotes that we're looking for. So that's awesome. But we also want the author as well as all the different tags. So let's start with the author. Let's use the selector once again and see what the class name is. In this case, you can see the class name is author. So this is going to be really simple. Now, the author element is actually within the quote parent element. So we can use the same method as we did with the quote text. So back in our code, we can go ahead and close our terminal and right next to quote text. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called quote author, or actually I can just call this author and set this to quote element dot query selector. And once again, because it's one single author, we're using query selector and not query selector all. And the class name is author, of course. And to get the text within that HTML tag, we can use dot inner text. Now, instead of just pushing quote text, what we can do is we can push the quote itself, which is going to be quote text. And we can also go ahead and pass in the author property so we can say author and save our file. Let's now start our application once again and see what we get. So now we have an array of objects. Each object has two properties. One is the quote itself and the next is the author. So all of this seems to be working just fine. Now let's go ahead and deal with the tags. Let's go back to our browser and see what class name it uses. So we can use the selector once again and let's go ahead and hover over one of these tags. So as you can see inside the quote parent element, I can close down the text and the author. You can see we have a div with the class name of tags. And inside this div, we have a bunch of anchor tags, which are links. And these links have a class name of tag. So we can use tags and this tag class name in order to get each one of these texts. So what we can do here is we can use both of these selectors right here. So we're going to first target tags and each one of the tag inside of it. So back in our code, I'm going to create a variable called tag elements. 
And this is going to be very similar to quote element. So we can set this to quote element, which is the parent element itself. And we can use query selector all because there's multiple tags. And in here, we can use the tags class, which if you remember is the parents div, and we can go ahead and use the tag itself. So let's go ahead and put dot tag. Now I'm going to define a variable just like I did with quotes array. And this is going to be tags array. I'm going to set this to an empty array by default because we want to loop through each one of these elements. So I'm going to say for const tag element of tag elements. And inside what we can do is we can go ahead and get the tag text or tag label. And this is going to be tag element dot inner text. Now that we have the tag label, which is each one of these tags right here, we can go ahead and push them into this tags array. It's really simple. We can just say tags array dot push and we can push this tag label. So now that we have a tags array with a bunch of strings, we can also go ahead and push it into the quotes array. So I'm going to say tags and set this to tags array. Now let's save the file and restart our application and see what we get. So we got a bunch of stuff. Let's go ahead and expand our terminal. And as you can see, we have an array of objects. Each one of these objects have the quote, author and tags properties, and all of them work just how we expect them to work. Now, of course, from here, you can take this data and most likely push it to a database somewhere. But in this video, I just wanted to get you started with web scraping. And if you want to practice a little more, I highly recommend this bookstore, which has a lot more data that you can use. So that's about it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.